Welcome to Electron Online. Here's case number three. Remember, in the first case, we learned that if the denominators are not the same, but if the small denominator fits evenly into the large denominator, the common denominator is the larger of the two denominators. The second case was if both of the denominators were prime numbers or they did not have any factors in common, the common denominator was simply the product of the two denominators. But in this case, neither one of those two are true. We could solve the problem by simply multiplying the two denominators together and call that the common denominator, but that would make the problem a lot harder because we'd be dealing with a lot bigger numbers. It is better to find the lowest common denominator with the technique that we've learned before. What we're going to do here is we're going to take each of the two denominators and write it as the product of their factors. In other words, 6 can be written as 2 times 3, so 6 is equal to 2 times 3, and 16, when I divide it by 2, I get 8, divided by 2, I get 4, divided by 2, I get 2, or 16 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which means that the lowest common denominator can be found by taking the largest number of the same factor, so here I have 4 2's and I have 1 2 here, which means I take the 4 of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times, I have 1 3 here, I don't have any 3's here, but I take the largest number I can find times 3. This is 16 times 3 or 48, which means that the common denominator of these two denominators will be 48. Now that we've found the lowest common denominator, that means I'm going to have to change these two denominators to the lowest common denominator. That means that the first fraction will have a denominator of 48, and the second fraction will have a denominator of 48. Of course, what did I have to do to turn a 6 into 48? I had to multiply 6 times 8 to get 48. How do you figure that out? Take 48, divide it by 6, and you get 8. 6 goes into 48 exactly 8 times. That means since I had to multiply the denominator times 8 to get 48, I have to do exactly the same to the numerator. I need to take the numerator 5 and also multiply that numerator times 8. I multiply 6 times 8 to get 48. I must also multiply 5 times 8 to get 48. Now, how many times does 16 go into 48? 3 times, that means I have to take that numerator and also multiply that times 3, the number of times that 16 goes into 48. Since I had to multiply 16 times 3 to get 48, I must also multiply the numerator by 3. Now I can simplify this. This becomes 5 times 8, which is 40, divided by 48, plus 3 divided by 48. And now since I have the same denominator, I can simply add the numerators. 40 plus 3 over 48, which means I get 43 over 48, which is the sum of these two fractions. Let's do it on the second example. Now there we have a subtraction, but again, before we can subtract, we need to find the common denominators. The common denominators can be found, found as follows. 4 can be written as 2 times 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, 4 equals 2 times 2. And 22 is divisible by 2, which gives me 11. That means 22 can be written as 2 times 11. To find the LCD, I need to find the greatest number of the common factor. Notice that here I have two 2's. I only have one 2 here, which means 2 times 2 goes in here. And then I have one 11 here. I must multiply this times 11. 4 times 11 is 44. That becomes the lowest common denominator. Which means I have to turn this denominator into 44. What number do I have to multiply 44 by, uh, 4 by to get 44? Well, if I multiply 4 by 11, I get 44, which means I also have to multiply the numerator times 11 to get 44. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a slightly different technique. Notice here, I simply knew that my lowest common denominator was 48, so I put 48 there. But here, instead of doing that, I simply said, what do I need to multiply 4 by to get the new common denominator? 
and I realize that 4 times 11 will give me 44, which means I need to multiply the denominator times 11 and the numerator times 11. I'm doing the same thing in a slightly different way, just so you can see how this is done. Minus 1 over 22. What do I need to do to the denominator to make it into a 44? I need to multiply the denominator times 2, which means I must also multiply the numerator times 2. This is just to illustrate that I was doing the exact same thing to the numerator as the denominator, just like I did over here. Now I can go ahead and simplify things a little bit. This is equal to 33 over 44 minus 2 over 44. And since they're on the same denominator, this can now be written as 33 minus 2 over 44 or 31 divided by 44. So you can see I did the problem in a slightly different way, but it's the exact same technique. Here's the third one. Let's do this one now the way we did it over here. Again, we need to find the lowest common denominator. I take the number 8, I divide it by 2 to get 4, divide it by 2 to get 2, which means that 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. I take the number 60, divide by 2, I get 30, divide by 2, I get 15, divide by 3, I get 5, which means that 60 can be written as 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. That means that the lowest common denominator, the LCD, is going to be equal to the product of the factors I can find the most of. Here I find three twos, and here I find two twos. That means I use three of the twos, two times two times two. And I have one three here times three, and I have one five here times five, which means two times two times two, which is eight, times three times five is 15, which means my lowest common denominator in this case is going to be 120. That means that my two fractions now will have the new denominator of 120 and 120. Now I've asked this question, what did I need to do to 8 to turn into 120? I need to multiply 8 times 15, which means I must also multiply the numerator times 15. So the numerator becomes 5 multiply times 15. For the second denominator, what did I need to do to 60 to turn into 120? 60 times 2 will give me 120. So if I multiply the denominator by 2, I must multiply the numerator by 2 as well. And the numerator then becomes 3 multiply times 2. Remember, if I multiply 8 times 15 to get 120, I must multiply 5 times 15 as well. If I multiply 60 times 2 to get 120, I must multiply 3 times 2 as well. Always multiply the denominator and the numerator by the exact same number. To complete the problem, I can now write this over. I can write this as 75 over 120 plus 6 over 120, which is 75 plus 6 over the common denominator 120, which is 81 divided by 120. Now notice that if I add 8 plus 1 together, I get 9, which is divisible by 3. If I add 1 plus 2 together, I get 3, which is divisible by 3. It turns out that both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by 3. 3 goes into 81 27 times. 3 goes into 120 40 times. This can then be written as 27 over 40 as the simplified answer. Again, the technique is to find the lowest common denominator. You find all the factors of the two denominators. You then find the lowest common denominator by multiplying the greatest number of each factor that you can find. And then you change the denominators to the new lowest common denominator. You find out what number you have to multiply the denominator with to get that denominator. And you multiply the numerator by the exact same number. And that's the third technique of case number three. When we add fractions, when we add or subtract fractions, that's the technique you're going to have to follow if the denominators are not the same. 6 times 8 is 48. That means I have to multiply. Oh, oh, oh. I did this wrong. It's 8, not 6. <laughs> Thank you. See, those are the silly mistakes I make, and I go, wow, what happened? It's just a brain fart, isn't it? Okay.